Hello everyone and welcome to the 2018 World Chess Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. This is game 2 of the Rapids. Uh, Magnus Carlsen has won game 1. If you haven't seen it, I will put a link to it in the description below. It uh, was a, a very intense game. This is game 2. Now Caruana has the white pieces. Uh, without further ado, I'm showing you these games as they are being played. So <laughs> let's just check them out. How will Caruana strike back with the white pieces basically? Uh, we will have a repeat of a game of a line that was played every time uh, in the classical time format. Of course, the Nejmedin of Rosolimo attack. Uh, so Caruana opens with e4. Of course, he definitely prepared something. So let's see who deviates first. Either, will it be Carlsen or Caruana? Uh, c5. The Sicilian defense is on the board. Knight f3. Knight to c6. D4. So everything uh, uh, we've already seen in this match. Captures, captures. Knight to f6. Knight c3 and e5. The Lasker variation is on the board. Uh, knight uh, d to b5, we have d6, and now uh, knight uh, to d5, uh, a move we've seen in every game in this line. Knight captures, pawn captures, and now knight to e7. This is the second time Carlsen goes for this line, uh, the last time he played it was in game 12. Uh, so let's see what goes on. c4, Caruana continues the same as he did in the classical time format, knight to g6 and queen to a4. Uh, we have bishop to d7 by Carlsen and now queen to b4. It'd be interesting if Carlsen continued. Now uh, white is already threatening knight captures on d6. But it would be interesting uh, because Carlsen won game 1 of the Rapids. If he if he went actually for the bishop to f5 line uh, offering uh, a perpetual like he did in the classical time format. Then we would have queen back to a4, bishop d7, queen b4, bishop to f5. Uh, but of course he does not go for it as Caruana most likely prepared something for it. So instead queen to b8, uh, a new move we have in this game. And it's similar to the move uh, Houdini played, uh, Stockfish played against Houdini, that queen to b8 line where the queen will at some point return to c7 when the knight is kicked away from b5. Uh, h4. Uh, Caruana now wants to question Carlsen's questionable knight on g6, and Carlsen says h5. Uh, my knight is perfectly fine on g6. Uh, bishop to e3, and now we have a new move. Uh, this position was never before reached in any database, so now the, both players are presumably out of book. Uh, a6, kicking away Caruana's knight from b5, knight c3, and now comes a5. As uh, at some point this knight might uh, get any some ideas to come to a4 and b6, so Carlsen has a different plan. We have a5, kicking away Caruana's queen, queen to b3 and a4, and now Caruana has to decide what to do with the queen. Uh, b4 is possible, queen b6 is a highly questionable what would the queen even do there rook to a6 can simply kick uh, you know push it back whenever it wants uh, so uh, queen to d1 by Caruana. Uh, bishop to e7 we have g3 uh, a very important move that we've already seen uh, in game 12 uh, controlling the knight on g6 taking away the f4 square from it uh, queen to c8 now the queen is no longer necessary there the queen bishop battery now takes control of the g4 square and Caruana reinforces it we have bishop to e2 and Carlsen goes a bishop to g4 nonetheless he wants to trade these two bishops and weaken the c4 pawn uh, rook to c1 Caruana develops the rook and also now the, the rook will also protect the c4 pawn this knight might come to b5 at some point uh, bishop captures, queen captures, and queen to f5 now. Carlsen finds a way to infiltrate this position with the queen, and he has a very devious plan, especially for such a such a rapid time control. He wants to play e4, a move that uh, came as a, as a as a, a general theme in in a lot of the alliance of the Rosolimo played. Uh, he wants to play e4. This knight can then come to e5, and then knight to f3 will be a deadly maneuver. Uh, here we have c5 by Caruana. He wants to create a passed pawn. Knight to b5 was also an idea going th threatening something like knight to c7, but rook c8 and uh, black should be okay. Uh, so instead, we have c5 by Caruana, and here if Carlsen went for this, uh, then uh, Caruana can simply capture it. After bishop captures, queen b5 check, you would have to block, queen captures, you would... For a moment, uh, stall with uh, you know hinder Black's development. Black will not be able to castle. But after 97 castles, castles, uh, it would actually be a perfectly uh, fine position for White, where White would have a very dangerous passed pawn. Uh, so after c5, we have castles. Uh, 
c6 by Caruana, creating a passed c-pawn, b captures, d captures on c6, and now rook f to c8. Carlsen puts his rook uh, in front of the passed pawn, as now this is a very dangerous passed pawn, but it's not at all clear how, Car how Caruana plans to promote it. Uh, but after all, this is a rapid game, it's nothing is too clear here, as there is so much at stake here. Uh, here, queen to c4, a very nice move by Caruana, if he decided to go, he has to protect the, the passed c6 pawn, if he goes for something like knight to d5, seems very nice, the rook is protecting the pawn, the knight is threatening the bishop on e7, but here Carlsen would have the very unpleasant queen to e4, the knight on d5 is undefended, and also the rook on h1 uh, is undefended, and after knight captures with check, knight captures, the rook is still under attack, you would have to castle, uh, then white loses the very strong pass pawn, and black is just better here. So, after rook f to c8, uh, Corona plays the correct move, queen c4, defending the c6 pawn, bishop to d8, uh, gaining more control of the c7 square, but also in some variations, if the knight moves, bishop to a5 check could be very dangerous. Uh, we have knight to d5, uh, and now comes e4, a very nice move by Carlsen. And Caruana is very low on time here, he really has to figure out what to do, and it's not at all uh, a simple position. For example, if he decides to castle here, uh, knight e5 wins on the spot, uh, the queen is under attack, uh, the queen has no good squares from where she can guard the knight on d5, and after you move the queen, knight f3 check, king has to move, you win the knight and the game. Uh, a move that would allow Caruana to continue playing this game, and perhaps, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, play it further uh, would be bishop to d4 uh, because you would actively defend against bishop to a5 here uh, after bishop to a5 uh, bishop to c3 blocking captures captures this rook will come to a5 attack the knight but then after the knight moves with an attack on the queen uh, it will be possible to defend here Caruana played c7 but c7 is simply a blunder that uh, Caruana will simply not be able to recover from uh, Carlsen played bishop captures on c7, <laughs> we have knight captures on c7, and yes, Caruana has won a pawn here, but Carlsen goes knight to e5, with an attack on the queen, and also with threats of this knight coming to f3. So it's uh, not at all clear how to defend this. Uh, also, uh, the knight can come to d3, with check, pick up the rook on c1. So, uh, in face of all of these threats, uh, the, the, the best course of action would be to simply allow knight to d3, so black can pick up the rook here, and then after that go after the knight on c7, but that would also be a losing idea. Here, Corona tried a different plan, he played knight to d5, which is a very nice idea, uh, but uh, here Caruana was uh, too far down on the clock. And the idea is uh, next. If Carlsen actually captures the queen, then you get knight e7 check. Carlsen moves the king, knight captures on f7. And after captures, 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 you can see that Caruana would actually be uh, up a whole knight. Uh, with uh, most likely a winning uh, game. But here, after knight d5, Carlsen simply played king to h7. Now there are no more tricks with knight to e7. And here... Uh, there's simply too much uh, being threatened, there's no way to defend the rook on c1, uh, knight to d3 is coming, uh, knight to f3, a huge threat, and here in line of uh, simply too much too much threats, there's really nothing to do here. Uh, one, one such idea would be if, uh, let's say, you move the queen, queen e2, uh, and now comes knight d3 check, with a double attack against the rook, king moves, simply knight captures on c1. And now, uh, it's, it's, it's simply too much to bear. Uh, after the knight moves, for example, the queen on f5 is attacked, the rook on c8 is attacked, uh, queen moves, uh, now comes queen to d1, uh, but now queen will capture the knight uh, on e7. Uh, you would not, eh, or you can go for this, but then the queen hangs uh, on e2, so basically uh, e either is fine. Queen moves, queen captures, uh, and now uh, there's really nothing to do. Bishop captures, queen goes back to e5, uh, and uh, it, it's possible to continue, but uh, your development is just terrible, uh, you have, uh, you're down the exchange, and you will lose this game eventually. Uh, but one problem, uh, uh, other than all of this, after king to h7, Caruana spent all of his time, he had less than a minute on the clock, and in this position he decided to resign the game. So, uh, this is game two of the Rapids, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank James Lindsay, uh, Zane Hooper, Jason Taylor, uh, E. Guncevic, and Given Manaj for a contribution to my channel, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Now, uh, Carlsen is in the lead, two points in the match, and as there are two more games left in the Rapid time format, Caruana now has to win both games to get back in the match, will he stay?
still uh, have his uh, super nerves and perhaps even try to complete this uh, her her Herculean task, uh, we'll just have to check it out. So uh, that's the game. Uh, I, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, with game three of the Rapids. See you soon.